welcome to the Think Big with Mike podcast, where we are bringing together the top entrepreneurs and investors from all areas to share what they have learned and used to succeed in their business. Education, motivation, inspiration. Subscribe and share today. Now strap in for another episode of Think Big with Mike. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Think Big with Mike, your host here, Mike Gonzalez. Uh, today's episode, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, how I stepped into the real estate industry and locked up my first deal and how I came about doing that. I get asked, uh, I get asked quite a bit by friends, family, uh, colleagues, you know, you know, how do they got how I got started? How do you get your deal? How did how did you get into the business? You know, everybody, everybody believes there's probably some some school that you go to and it teaches you how to do everything. And when you come out, there's ready made uh, template for everything that we do. And, uh, and in reality, it's 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 probably just the opposite uh, of all that, which means that uh, there's a whole lot of rolling the dice, a whole lot of flying by the seat of your pants and hoping that uh, you can string things together until you find the uh, find the right formula. So uh, I just want to run through this will be, like I said, a, a, another fast uh, segment, just kind of run through, you know, my my pitfalls and my startup and, and how I feel like I got where I where I am today. And, and hopefully it helps you. And if it does, uh, like I said, always give us the like, uh, subscribe, share our channel. And if you need, ever need anything, comment, comment along, find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and definitely reach out for us if we can be of any help. So uh, about four years ago, uh, my wife and I had been running a business for uh, a little over 10 years. Uh, and, and I was getting... I was getting antsy. I was getting a little burnt out in the retail business. Uh, we had a, a shop, a couple locations, and and we, I was just getting to that point after that long that that uh, you know I was looking for something different. Uh, like most folks, I probably sat around watching the uh, the the uh, HGTV or do what do it yourself network, and I got to see these folks, um, you know, basically go in, buy a house, or find a house, find a deal, negotiate it down, uh, buy it flip it in 90 days they they were walking away with 30 40 60 70 90 thousand dollars and i kept thinking to myself man it just looks like i mean give me 90 days give me the cash i'll i i can do that i i can do that you know it's it's that easy and and it was amazing and so in the afternoons between i guess judge judy and the divorce court i got a chance to watch all that so it, it was just those 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 ideas that kind of got my uh that got my interest going and so i started doing a little research i got online did the, the youtube uh youtube academy videos like everybody else and and kind of got my feet a little bit wet or at least uh you know educated myself a little bit more about um uh, about getting into the uh, real estate business, both from a wholesaling standpoint and from a flip, um, you know, a flipper standpoint. And I, I and, and, and kind of saw what avenues I was going to m- maybe try to reach out for and, and how I was going to get started. So I'll kind of fast forward through all that. Like I said, did the YouTube videos, uh, read some books. I went to a couple local seminars that were being put on. Now, I, just myself, I never, never went out and paid for any training, um, it, it was it was being made available. They were offering classes that you could pay for. I just took advantage of all the freebie stuff. Uh, and usually the free stuff is they give you about that much information. They talk about all the wonderful things that can happen. And then they, they need you to pay uh, to go and, and learn the rest, which is fine with me. Uh, you know, education is not cheap. Uh, and it definitely shortens your 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 learning curve when you're when you're jumping off into this business. Uh, maybe call me stubborn. I, I don't know. I just I just prefer sometimes to to you know sling it up on the wall, see what sticks, and, and then take it from there. So that's kind of what I did. I, I got a little bit of education in me, and then I thought, man, I could do this. So what I ended up doing, or what I what I learned was first off is I had to find a seller, someone who would sell me their house and someone that I could work with and negotiate with in order to get a deal. So I didn't really know how, I didn't have a lot of money to, to invest into a second business. So I was just kind of funneling a little bit off to the side to kind of get started. And what I did was I went and I, I bought some blank bandit signs 
Uh, bandit signs are those those signs you see on the side of the road where everybody's either handwritten or got printed. And they go and they tag them on telephone poles or they stick them at the corner of the intersection. And those are called bandit signs. And, and I ordered about 100 of them. And uh, I sat around with uh, my family and friends. And we got the big magic markers out. And we wrote, I will buy your house, cash. And I wrote down my telephone number. Now, as I'm writing these out, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I don't, I don't have all that cash, you know, uh, could I get my hands on it? Probably, uh, you know, pretty sure I could, whether it be from a bank or a hard money lender as I've, I'd learned, but I hadn't had any experience with, uh, so, but, but I wanted to go ahead and get that deal. I wanted to and get under contract because that is apparently what we were supposed to, supposed to do is get these deals under contract. So I went off, got all my bandit signs and I went out on a Friday evening, uh, me and my wife and we would, she would drive in, I'd jump out, I'd tick, 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 bang it up on the telephone pole, or I'd stick it in the ground at a, at a busy intersection, and we were off. I did that for, for a couple of weeks. I uh, did that, and I did a bunch of driving for dollars, uh, for those of y'all that are familiar with it, and that's just driving neighborhoods looking for uh, houses that I'd be interested in and, and then documenting down the information for follow-up. So uh, we'll leap ahead a little bit. My phone starts ringing. I'm getting calls from folks that say, hey, I'm interested. Some people are motivated to sell, some are not. Uh, it took about two weeks uh, by the time I got started before I had somebody that was very interested and I was actually negotiating. Um, we agreed on a price and I was to prepared to bring a contract. However, I'd, I'd never... I'd never filled out a contract before. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even have a contract. So I got online again, jumped on my little YouTube, went to some of my groups, got referred to the Trek contract here in Texas, the, the TREC Trek contract, and I downloaded it. I watched a YouTube video on how to fill it out. I went back to my notes for some of the classes I'd gone to and just kind of, I drew it up. And the next day I was down there with the seller and I was saying, hey, Miss Seller. And I put the contract in front of her and she signed it. Scary. That's the scary part. She signed it. I signed it. I, I guess that's what I was supposed to do. So, you know, here I am two weeks into this industry, two weeks into marketing and I've just signed a deal for $60,000 on a house up in Conroe. I, I, I'm not sure where I was going to get my $60,000 from. But I had a contract. And that's what everyone told me I should be doing, is going to get these contracts. And so now I have a contract and I have to make a decision. Uh, one is, where am I going to get my money to close this deal? Two... Am I keeping this house as a flip and will I resell it or keep it as a rental or would I wholesale this house and would I wholesale the contract and sell my interest in the contract and allow somebody else to take on that burden and, you know, pull me out a little bit of profit for the wholesale. So as I'm moving through these processes and I'm playing devil's advocate with my contract and I'm reworking numbers a thousand times. Um, I start wondering, okay, well, even if I decide to wholesale it or sell it, how do I find a buyer? So I had to go through that hurdle and, and I'm doing it on the fly. I'm doing it as I have this contract. I'm doing it as the sellers saying, okay, when are we going to title? Okay. When is this happening? And, and so I'm figuring these things out all along the way. And it's, it's, and it's not easy and it's a little scary because I'm, I think I've bitten off more than I could chew. And I think I've, I, you know, maybe I've made a mistake, you know, maybe I have signed up for something that I'm unqualified to carry to the finish line. And so I start second guessing everything that I've done. All I can do is go back and fall back on what got me to this point. I can go back and look at the goals I'd set. And so I just double down and I start working hard. I start looking for buyers. I contact a title company. I start just asking a thousand questions from peer groups, uh, from the online groups, from these meetings that I go to. I'm asking a thousand questions. And uh, 
you know, finally what it comes down to is this is probably going to be more of a wholesale deal for me. It's an opportunity to get this first deal under my belt, my first deal to have an accomplishment so I can put the feather in my hat and say, hey, I've done it and I can do it again. And so that's my that was my focus. I ended up finding a buyer uh, who was interested in the property. I, you know, I ran the deal online. I ran the deal in some groups that specialize in finding houses for buyers. Uh, and I ended up finding one. The deal that that uh, we wrote out, I think I said 60000 I wrote the contract. It was for 40000 or 45000 And uh, $45,000 for the house and the truck contract. I ended up selling the contract or wholesaling the contract for 60000 So that ended up making me 15000 did I do my math right? So I made $15,000 on my first wholesale deal after two weeks of running bandit signs and driving for dollars. Uh, went to closing. Actually, I didn't even go to closing. I sent everything over there. I watched it from afar, biting my nails, hoping nothing fell through. The deal went smooth. Um, the seller was happy. The buyer was happy. And it was my first, first accomplishment. It was my first deal. It was a great time at that point i thought oh man this is easy i'm gonna be a billionaire in about a month i will do this over and over and over again and i am i am not gonna stop well then reality catches up and you realize that uh you know those deals don't always happen that way there's a lot of stuff that can happen there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong there's a lot of twists and turns in the market and with marketing however it it got me hooked it uh, it's what kept me motivated and it kept me driving forward. And that's been several years back. Uh, we do several deals uh, a year now and, you know, whether it be wholesaling or, or, you know, subject to deals or keeping for rentals or flips uh, we've done them all now. And I say do them all. We've done the majority of what, what we're capable of doing. There's still a lot of, a lot of areas that, that we're still learning and that we're still figuring out and how to move into those areas. But uh, that was our first deal. Uh, it didn't take me long. Um, it won't take you long if this is something you're trying to do. You just got to be persistent. You just have to be uh, motivated and passionate. You have to set your goals and you actually have to, to do something. You can't just read a bunch of books, watch a bunch of stuff on TV, sit in front of your computer and learn everything on YouTube and then not take any action. If I can give anybody some advice, it's take action on anything that you do, whether it be this, other businesses, something that you're trying to accomplish with your goal. If you don't take that first step and you don't follow it up with another action to keep moving towards your goal, you will never, never reach out and never reach the, the level that you want to get to. And you'll never, you'll never have it accomplished. You'll just be constantly learning. You'll be constantly absorbing everything in. So do me a favor. Once you realize what it is that you want to accomplish, don't be scared. Just step out there. And I know it's a scary, scary thing. I was scared. I was scared when I got that contract signed. When I watched, I sat at a restaurant, and I watched her sign it in front of me. I didn't have DocuSign and all that back then. It was me, my contract, and a restaurant. And when she signed it, it was terrifying and, and exciting at the same time. But uh, I understand. But take action. Stand up, step out, and take action. Hope this gives you a little insight about who I am, what I've been doing, how I got started, and hopefully it helps you if you're at that point or you're at that critical moment where you don't know what you're wanting to do or what you're wanting to push forward with. Just always remember, take that step forward. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely hit us on the comments. Uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, as always, and uh, definitely give us the old thumbs up if something like here has uh, appealed to you. And like and share our channel as uh, we would be definitely appreciative uh, so we can keep bringing this wonderful content to you. you guys have a great day.